Hey guys, it's Vlogmas Day 10. Hey, in today's video, I'm gonna be talking with you guys all about my struggle with weight gain, my weight loss, my gastric bypass surgery, and now Crohn's. So if that sounds good, keep watching. Hey guys, what's up? It's Vanessa and welcome back to my channel. And as promised, I am doing a story time video today. I have had several, several requests to talk more about my weight loss surgery, my struggle with weight loss and weight gain, and the fact that I have now developed Crohn's over the last couple of years. So that's basically what this video is about, but a really quick intro as to who I am. I'm Vanessa. I am part of a blended family of six. I have my daughter and my spouse has his three children and we live together in New Brunswick, Canada. Now I am also an army veteran as is my spouse, uh, actually Air Force veteran. Um, I was in the army for almost 10 years. Um, I was released medically for PTSD, severe anxiety, uh, and some physical injuries that I have as well. So that pretty much sums up in a nutshell who I am and where I'm at. I do not currently work. I am still on a medical pension and honestly will probably be on it for quite some time. So that's about who I am. Now let's start at the very beginning. So I do have some notes here for myself just because I feel like I'm going to miss things or there's, I know when I did um, my very first Q&A kind of mukbang style and I touch my hair a lot, I'm sorry, it's a nervous thing and this is a very personal topic for me so I may be touching it probably about a hundred times more. We'll do a little hair count. No, I won't do that. Anyway, so I did make myself some notes because I do kind of get ahead of myself and I'm and I start talking like a crazy person and I wanted to make sure that I got out the important things that I really wanna talk about and bring forward to you guys because there could be people who struggle with some of these things as well. So the first note that I have here for myself is did I always struggle with my weight? So if you were to rewind back to high school, no, I didn't struggle with my weight. I've always been, or I had always been very active. I played sports, basketball and soccer, and I was just always outdoors and doing things. It wasn't until honestly in grade 12 uh, when I had a severely ruptured appendix, which had been ruptured for weeks. I literally almost died. Uh, I was in the hospital for three weeks. I missed a month of school. It was a really big deal back then. My mom was really upset. My sister was away at university uh, to become an army officer as well, um, came home, it was a big deal. So recovered from that, but that was basically my very first issue with abdominal issues. So I have a scar that actually goes from my belly button all the way down, all the way down, and it's quite, it's quite thick. So it's, it's a pretty substantial scar. My stomach, my poor stomach has, some scars on her, let me tell you, but I love her. Um, so that was the very first thing that kind of stinted uh, my ability to, to work out and things. So I wasn't doing sports anymore in grade 12. So I basically went from about 158. Bear in mind, I am almost six feet tall. I say I'm six feet tall. I was that height in the 12th grade. So I was about 158 and I jumped to 175, 180 by the time I graduated high school. So I had put on about 20 pounds having not worked out, which frankly was still a very healthy weight, to be honest. Um, in my eyes back then, if you'd have told me that, I wouldn't have believed you. <laughs> So basically after that, I graduated high school and I actually ended up moving to Ontario with my sister who was in the military at the time. And I enrolled in Ontario's grade 13 back then um, because I didn't know what I wanted to do. And it was kind of like an interim way for me to decide if I wanted to go to school. Anyway, I was there, I gained more weight. I ended up only doing a month of school. I was too anxious, I didn't like it out there. So basically sat at my sister's for a few months and just ate my face off did that too, made it up to about 195 at this point. So I knew at this point in my life, the potential to gain weight, she was there. I'm a weight gainer. If I can eat it, I'm gonna eat it and I'm gonna gain it. <laughs> that's pretty much my reality. Uh, so that's about when I realized that, you know what, weight is gonna be something I just have to be aware of. It doesn't matter, but I didn't feel good with a little bit of extra weight on me. I couldn't do the things I wanted to do. I couldn't do the sports I wanted to do, you know, things like that. It, it all took extra effort. So anyway. That's about when I would have been about 19 at that point when I really started to realize that 190 was probably about where I was gonna sit. So now you fast forward a few years later, just before I'm about to join the military, about one year before, which would have been around 2004. And I wanna say, I, 
I, my highest weight before joining the military was 260 pounds. I joined Curves for Women. My mom worked there. She was a personal trainer at the time, so it was just perfect. And I'll tell you, my mother was amazing. She packed my lunches every day when I would go to work. I worked at a call center. That's the other thing. All of my jobs were always very stationary. I was an admin assistant. I worked in call centers. I always did that. Even in the military, I spent a lot of time at a desk. So it's just, you know, <laughs> mentally draining when you get home you don't want to be physical you're just so tired anyway so yeah I joined curves um, I followed their weight loss plan I followed I worked out five to six days a week and it was the 30 minute workout routine you know you did three rounds of their little gym I absolutely loved it actually and I swear by it it really worked I feel like everything works if you're consistent so at that point let me just tell you in those few years there I fluctuated between like two and I would go from 250 down to 200 to 250 to 190 like I fluctuated so much because I did every diet leave your diets down below and I will tell you I did them I did the cabbage suit diet I did the curves diet the Atkins diet which was basically a version of keto but I think a little bit less healthy than keto I don't know uh, Weight Watchers I did Weight Watchers online I did Weight Watchers meetings with my sister and I did very well at all of them all of them worked very well when I did them right? That's kind of the point of any of them. And the problem was trying to find something that's sustainable, that you can actually maintain. And for me, that ended up being the Canada Food Guide, literally. So I don't know if in your country, you probably have your government has a suggested portion size and all of that. That's what I followed. I counted calories. So just before the military, I joined this little boot camp. I was working out every morning at like 4.30 in the morning, guys. I wanted to do that because I wanted to get myself acclimated to basic training, which I knew I was gonna have to be up at the crack of dawn up till 11 o'clock at night, right? So I did that. I was eating super healthy. As per the Canada Food Guide, I'd have a bagel every morning with peanut butter. Like I didn't deprive myself at all and I lost weight. The bottom line that I learned in that moment and I was probably 23, 24 at the time, 23, uh, was that, oh, you gotta move your body. You've got to move your body but you've got to fuel it properly or your body's not going to want to move. Your mind's not going to want to move your body if you're not fueling it properly, right? So I was like, okay. So Canada Food Guide literally was amazing. And I'll tell you, when I did Atkins diet, I ended up on blood pressure and cholesterol medication because my cholesterol went through the roof. Now I'm not saying that keto and Atkins will give you high cholesterol, but if you're somebody who already is prone to having that, then those diets aren't good for you. So for me, uh, high protein and high fat diets even then weren't good. And obviously now we'll get to that in a minute with Crohn's, definitely high fat is not good for Crohn's. So I basically did all the diets, figured out Canada food guide exercise. That's the key. I dropped from 260 down to 180. And then I fluctuated at around 195, 200 until I joined the military in 2007. So I had lost the weight about a year or two before joining the army and then fluctuated, like I said. So I had been down as low as 185, but I was happy at 200. Girl, I'm happy at 200 pounds. I like my body at 200 pounds. And it's funny because people always used to say things like when you're talking about somebody or at least in the 90s, you know, when people were really inappropriate, uh, they would say things like, well, at least what are you talking to me like I'm 200 pounds. You're acting like I'm 200 pounds. What's wrong with 200 pounds? What's wrong with three? What's wrong with 400 pounds? If you're healthy and you feel good, then do it. I'm just tired of people judging and having an opinion about other people's lives. Worry about your own. Okay, mini rant over. <laughs> All right, here I go. I told you I was gonna ramble. It's been nine minutes. So basically that happened. I applied for the army. I was super psyched. I had been working out. I had done all the boot camps. I felt fit. I felt strong. I was strong. Then fast forward to my fourth or fifth week in basic training, the end of November of 2007, I fractured my pelvis. And so when I joined the military, I was 200 pounds, 201, 202, 200. I was about that. By the time I was in the end of my fourth week, I was down to 172 pounds. You lose a lot of weight in basic training, especially if you're somebody with a little extra anyway, right? And I always had a little extra weight. Anyway, <laughs> I liked, I don't mind being a little bit, I want a little bit more weight. Anyway, we'll get there. We'll get to that in a minute. But basically, by the end of that, I had lost like 30 pounds in four and a half weeks in basic training. And I was stuffing my face. I was eating three meals a day. I mean, they force you to. So I, when I fractured my pelvis, I can just tell you, uh, 
that's a whole other story. Maybe I'll give you guys that story time sometime, but I could get into that for 20 minutes. Let's just say, long story short, I fractured my pelvis and then I continued for another seven days of doing physical PT, uh, extremely, extremely difficult drill because we were preparing for a big drill test. So I was spending minimum of three to four hours a day slamming my heel into concrete floors in a drill hall. I was spending every morning running eight to 10 kilometers. I was doing everything that a soldier does marching. This base that I went to, and I'll show you a picture, the mega, is three and a half kilometers round. <laughs> anyway, we did three turns of it. And that's how I fractured my pelvis. And I hope he's watching. Because you know, I'm gonna have a little rant here and I, I shared some stuff on my stories about women in the military and sexual assault and just other things. No, the military can't police themselves and somebody needs to do something about that. They can't. They're too biased. It's a boys club. It's an all boys club. Anyway, that's another story time. So, fractured my pelvis, I was sent to the injured platoon, which is where you hang out to heal. Uh, while I was there, I got extremely depressed, as you can imagine, extremely depressed. I had just worked so hard for five weeks and basically was told by my entire section of commanders or sergeants and master corporals and corporals that this was not fair, it was not my fault, and it should have never happened, and that this PO who did this to me should be reprimanded. And it was basically uh, being forced to, uh, anyway, excessive training is basically what it ended up being. I'm not gonna get into that either. <laughs> but I got hurt, and what do you do when you're hurt and you're depressed? Or what do you do when you're randomness? You eat your face off, and that's pretty much what I did. I could barely move around but I still had to. Let's keep that in mind. This three and a half kilometer base, which I was about a kilometer and a half away from my mess hall, which I had to walk to three times a day with crutches and then with a cane. And it took me about seven months to heal from that or six months to heal. And then I was put on another platoon. Um, at this point, honestly, I hadn't gained too much of my weight back, but I was pretty much around 190. So here we are, 190 pounds, about to start basic training, and I graduated, everything went well, it was fine. Well, everything didn't go well, that's another story too. But I managed to get the heck out of Saint-Jean, Quebec. Sorry, I don't ever wanna go back there. <laughs> So at this point, I was just starting off my career. Uh, I had some hiccups because I had originally signed up to be a radio operator, was like, no way, not doing that, and ended up switching over to be a resource management support clerk because quite honestly, it's where my skills lied. I had a university experience, I had all admin experience, call center, I was bilingual. It just made sense for me to be an admin admin in the military as well. It didn't mean that I didn't get to be a soldier and do all that fun stuff, but it did mean that my skills were gonna be utilized in the Canadian Armed Forces and that made me feel so good. Now, I should say I met my husband, my ex-husband in basic training. No regrets, everything happens for a reason, right? We got our beautiful daughter out of it, Belle. So again, no regrets. So we met, we fell in love instantly, we like within, I think within a few months we, he had proposed, we were married within a year, like it was really quick. And then we had a baby, he went away to Afghanistan. Basically, here we go. This is the start. This is the start of when randomness goes crazy. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Uh, I laugh because it's serious and I try to make a joke when something's serious, but for real. He went away to Afghanistan two weeks prior to being deployed, well, I found out we were pregnant. Uh, so I was pregnant with my daughter, Belle, and he, I had to go away on a course myself while I was pregnant. So my first four months uh, of pregnancy, I was on a course in Ontario and he was in Afghanistan. So the whole time I'm on course, I'm constantly waiting for phone calls that he's not getting blown up, he, that he's checking in with me every day. Uh, his job while he was over there was very risky. Uh, he was working with IEDs and explosives and bomb dogs and engineers and, he, he's an infant here. Anyway, it was very dangerous. So I was a ball of nerves because I was pregnant, nervous. Plus I was trying to pass my own course so that I could be certified in my trade. Finally, it was a lot. So emotionally, it pretty much started there. That's when I knew that I was starting to like this, everything was starting to get to me, you know? And I never really tied a lot of it to my experience in basic training, which after seeing a therapist discovered, a lot of it goes back to that. 
And that's what it is. And the reason that I'm rambling on about this and my mental health and the things that caused me to get to this point is because that's when I started to gain weight. That's when it became a thing, when food became comfort. You know, I just made a joke in my grocery haul, like food is comfort. I'm joking, but I'm not. And for a while, it was the ultimate comfort. And I'm talking, when I was eating, I'd be like, you want McDonald's? He'd be like, yeah, I would go to McDonald's and get an extra meal and eat it before I got home so that he wouldn't know that I did it. Or by the end, I wasn't even hiding it. I was just like, I'm gonna eat what I wanna eat. So basically I got from you know, being 185 to 360 pounds. I gained over a hundred pounds when I was pregnant with Belle. So that was a big one. That was a big one. I ended up with type two diabetes or gestational diabetes, type two right after I gave birth to her. After I had her, I dropped to about 250. I was 300 when I checked into the hospital uh, right before I gave birth. Having her, you know, when you have the baby, you lose a lot of fluid, so everything, you know, you lose a little bit of weight. But at 250 is where I struggled. 250 was my struggle weight. Although when I look back, you know what? That wasn't a bad weight either. <laughs> it would have been okay. It was better than 360, but then things started to go wrong. My marriage was struggling immensely. My work, I was struggling. I was struggling at work, just trying to maintain that I was happy and everything was perfect and I could keep up with this facade of this perfect life I was trying to maintain. Uh, I took on new projects. I took on, I was I face painting. I took on cookies. I just, I took on selling Arbonne and all of them, I excelled at all of them because I was just pouring myself in them to be distracted. You know what I mean? To not think about what actually happened to me, to not actually focus on what caused it. You know, the root cause usually goes even further back than basic. You know, I could go back to my childhood, my father. There's so many reasons I could go back. At the bottom line is, I was upset that I was allowing my emotions to control this. Do you know what I mean? I was just, I was, I had enough. I was frustrated. So I had done some research on weight loss surgery. I approached our base surgeon, um, which is in the military. Uh, I had a BMI of 44%. I had talked to him, said that I had did everything. I basically laid it all out. He said, you sound like you know exactly what needs to be done at this point. Like I was ready. I was still maintaining my physical fitness levels and everything in the military. I was doing what I need to do. I would still do, go shooting. I could fire my rifle. I could do all the things that a soldier needed to do. I couldn't do them as efficiently and as well as I wanted to. And I couldn't mother as good as I wanted to because I couldn't even get up and down the stairs because I was 360 pounds and I just couldn't manage it. And I was fed up, let me tell you fed up. So he said, you know what? 100%, you meet the criteria. And for some reason at this point, now I worked in the orderly room, which is an office in the MIR, which is a, which is a field, which is a hospital in the military, the MIR. So I worked in the clinic in there as a clerk. So I seen a lot of people come and go who had had this surgery. So I was aware that the military was paying for people to have weight loss surgery. Keep your opinions to yourself. There are a lot of reasons why people gain weight. Even soldiers can be obese and overweight and have a purpose in the military. Cause I'm telling you, there's a lot of judgment when you're a heavy girl in the army. Okay, people assume when they look at you that you're lazy and fat and you're just stuffing your face and you don't wanna work. There was a lot more to my story. So I say, please, when you're looking at somebody, don't judge, don't, don't do that. Don't do that or keep it to yourself and don't let it affect how you treat them. And that mini rant, <laughs> but basically I saw, and I saw a lot of success stories. My friend, Alex, he I still saw him about a year ago. I gave him a huge hug. I'm getting goosebumps because he lost a huge amount of weight too. You know, we struggled with depression. It has a big effect. There's more to it. So, you know, I ended up, I, before that, I had also seen a therapist for th two, no, two years and she went on mat leave for an eating disorder, for binge eating, you know? So at this point, this doctor understood that I had taken all of the care. I had been seeing a therapist. I had been doing everything to prepare myself to get the surgery. So he approved me right away. Within five months, I believe, I had the surgery. I went to Montreal. Uh, they paid for me to go to a private hospital. I stayed up there for five days after my surgery, came home, had a few weeks to recover. God love my mother. She came here and helped me out, which was incredible because I had my daughter and my spouse who himself suffers and is now medically released with, or my ex-husband, with massive PTSD. So at that time we needed her because we were not there and I was not mentally prepared. And let me tell you, okay, so let's go back to the weight loss surgery. This is a story time, so I'm gonna ramble a little bit. The weight loss surgery. 
Let me fix my hair. Let me fix my hair. Um, when I went to Montreal to have a consultation with the doctor, uh, he said there are two surgeries, right? There's the gastric sleeve or the bypass and the Ruin Y, gastric bypass, Ruin Y. Uh, I'm gonna insert a couple of pictures just so you know what they are. I'm not gonna get into the science of it. Basically, my stomach went from like this to this, you know, like a tiny little stomach and I can't eat a lot of food at once. The reason I opted for Ru and Y, honestly, this doctor that performed it is the first doctor who brought it to Canada from the US back in the 70s. He had been performing the surgery for decades. So I was like, sold. <laughs> if anyone's going to do it, I want this doctor to do it. Dr. Chris Tu, I believe. He's probably retired now. I believe I was one of the first, he was in his last year of practice. So I literally got in there in the nick of time. There were no uh, issues with my surgery. The only thing was my husband, had, my ex-husband had a heart attack because I was twice as long when I came out of surgery. And the doctor said it was a little bit complicated because of the scarring from my abdominal surgery when I was 17. So had the surgery, let me just say, I felt horrible after, okay? Horrible. The recovery was brutal, painful. And I think the worst part was the air because it is uh, the air in your stomach and the releasing of the air, that's fun. <laughs> but it was horrible. The recovery was not comfortable, was very painful. And the 30 day, I will tell you for about 30 days after my surgery, I mourned food. I missed it. I cried. I was so sad. I was like, nobody really prepares you for this. Nobody mentally prepared me for the feeling of loss after that surgery, because the only thing that I had ever used to make myself feel better, I couldn't have it anymore. That was devastating. That was devastating. It took a few weeks and having my mom there and my ex-husband at the time and my daughter to kind of pull me out of that and then start to see the weight falling off. And I was like, okay, this, remember why you did this. But then after a few months, a few weeks, because in the first month or so, you're still on a pretty strict liquid diet. You can't really do solids and you slowly work your way up. Once I got to solids and realized I could eat everything. I had had friends that had this surgery who were never hungry, who had to force themselves to eat, who were like, I, I can't even eat these things. I can't eat pasta. I can't eat yogurt. I can't eat this stuff. This stuff makes me sick. Girl, nothing made me sick. Oh, I was almost upset about it. Actually, I was upset about it because I was like, what the heck? I got the surgery so that it would be a physical thing that stopped me from eating. So I couldn't physically eat anymore. You know, this is why I did it. And lo and behold, I can still eat small amounts, but I can still eat it. And I was like, crap, this is not what I wanted. But it was fine. I got over it. And you know what? I got into a really good workout regimen. I was taking care of myself and I was drinking protein shakes and, you know, eating salads and chicken and being pretty healthy. I wasn't really allowing myself a lot of crap. And then within a year, I lost just under 100 pounds, about 80 pounds. So not as fast as most of my friends who had had weight loss surgery. They had lost that in two months. Some of them also had a significant larger amount of weight to lose than I did. But still, I was like, oh, this is good, but it's not great. Like, it's just, it wasn't great because at the end of the day, surgery fixes nothing, right? Not a gastric bypass, not a sleeve. My understanding is with a sleeve, you can eat a little bit more than you can with gastric bypass at once. I don't know. Leave a comment down below if you've had it because honestly, I'm not 100% sure. I've watched a lot of videos and comments and opinions about it, but I'm not educated on it. So I don't know. Um, and it's also a little less permanent, maybe. I don't know. Again, if you are, I would appreciate you so much if you left a comment and maybe helped educate some other people if they're curious, but yeah. So basically, I just, I couldn't eat a lot. I could, uh, you know, I've learned to start eating six small meals a day, which frankly, even if you don't have weight loss surgery is really a good philosophy to go by, which is kind of what I do now. So basically, uh, by the time, okay. So basically, fast forward a little bit. That was in 2015 when I had that surgery, uh, 2016. I realized uh, the process of my release from the military began at the beginning of the year. Um, I realized, you know, I had done all these things that I thought were gonna make me better. You know, I had the weight loss surgery, I was losing weight, I felt good physically. Why do I still feel like crap? Well, because Vanessa, you have severe PTSD and you didn't even know it yet. 
at that point. So they started the paperwork, I was being released, um, I had ended up with a lot of pain in my hip and my pelvic area as well. I have a lot of back and knee pain. I also have a claim in for my knee. I'm telling you, this whole left side of my body because of my pelvis is kind of like warped. So that's where we're at. Uh, yeah, so fast forward, 2016, uh, accelerated the paperwork to be released, uh, got released in October of 2016. And at that point I was about 250 pounds. So I had gone from 360. Now, rewind a little bit before you have the surgery they put you on a two-week fast so all i could have was shakes and vegetables <laughs> so i had lost like 25 pounds in two weeks so prior to that it was like 340 335 or 330 when i went into the hospital for surgery so 250 a year later i had lost about 80 pounds released from the military that was probably a very hard day for me too october 2016. i also had another very difficult day in about december of 2016 which i don't talk about on my channel and i'm not going to talk about it today but i made a very poor choice for myself and i've come back from that largely but i feel like uh, a lot of the issues i was never dealing with right mental and physical all of that i was just kind of always finding some way to distract myself from having to deal with what was right in front of me you know that fight or flight i'm a flighter <laughs> flight see ya you know as soon as something got hard on youtube i left for two weeks that's not the answer either do you know what i mean a break yes flighting no and i'm trying to learn to stop flighting <laughs> yeah. but everything combined uh my marriage was over i had left my husband uh i had my career was over uh a couple months later i actually ended up meeting jamie and at this point, he, I looked at him as my savior. At that point, let me just tell you right now, he was there for me in very difficult times and pulled me out of very dark spaces and saved my life. A lot of you know that I used cannabis as my medicine. I have never touched marijuana until I was 35 years old and released from the Canadian Armed Forces. It was the first time I tried cannabis and it saved my life and I still use it to this day. I had a couple videos on my channel. I have privatized them for personal reasons, but they, it saved my life and I'm open about it. I do not throw it in your face because I, I don't think anybody should throw anything like that in anybody's face, but I do use it. And if you have questions, I am always here to answer. Send me a DM here or on Instagram. So that helped hugely, hugely with my mental health. Now, the next year and a half, I struggled huge. I was having a lot of issues with digesting food. I was having massive pains. Turns out I had more gallstones than anyone had ever seen in their entire life in my gallbladder. Uh, the doctors brought like six other doctors in. He's like, look at this. They're like, wow. I don't know what happened. He said it could be a combination of medication that I used to take in the past. I was on every antidepressant known to man. I was on physical, for physical pain. I was on everything. Well, Butrin, Prozac, uh, Effexor, all max dosed out, right? I was on all of those. I am on zero now, by the way. The only medication I'm on now is for Crohn's, which is what we're getting to. So basically that's what happened. My gallbladder, stones, uh, that, before, I, this is why I have notes, before my gallbladder was taken out, up to that point, I had lost 100 pounds in about nine months. This is where I'll show you a picture if I can find one of how thin I was. Um, didn't know what was going on. I just knew I didn't feel well and I just chalked it up to my surgery or stress. Uh, it was definitely stress. And once I had those removed, oh Lord, I felt so good. I felt so so good because I was so sick for months and months. I'd be like, oh, great, great. And then I'd be so sick. And if you've had it, you know it. And most people, you know, a lot of people get their gallbladder out, but I'm telling you, I was so sick and I'm a big baby. So got my gallbladder out. Life is going to start getting better. I hope. Uh, then realize, okay, I'm, I'm not gay. I'm, it's good. I had lost weight, but I was still thin. I needed to gain a little more. I started losing more weight. And then I ended up getting referred to a gastroenterologist, my gastric doctor, and after so several testings, and I would say over a year, uh, and I had been tested prior to that quite a bit for allergies, blood tests, everything up until leading to my gallbladder to see if I was having digestive issues. So it's probably took three years to diagnose me with Crohn's. Uh, she said Crohn's colitis, 
and I knew it when she did my colonoscopy and she was in there and she went, oh, and she's talking to the girl and she's like, do you see that? It's, oh, and they're trying to be quiet, but they, I know that it wasn't good. So as soon as I was done, she told me, she gave me my diagnosis. She put me straight away on steroids, which I am on my third round of. This was probably a year and a half ago I was diagnosed with Crohn's, I think. So I've been on budesonide, which is a steroid. Uh, I take that for four months and I'm also on injections monthly. I take Intivio. Um, my expectation right now actually is that she's going to change that up and put me on Humira or Remicade uh, as of February. But I'm gonna finish this round of medication and we're seeing where it goes. But uh, right now, full disclosure, you can probably tell just by watching my videos when I'm losing weight. Cause as a woman, when we lose weight in our face, <laughs> It shows in mine. I'm telling you, I'm just, it makes me sad. I'm trying not to be vain. Don't be vain. Don't be vain. I'm not vain. I just, you see my face. So I was up to, I was doing really well. I was up to 166 pounds. Again, I'm six feet tall. Uh, and that was at the beginning of the summer, maybe. I was doing okay. And then I had dropped quite a bit. I went down to like 158. And I told my doctor, so she put me back on this bet, on this medication and I'm still losing weight. Uh, actually, I'm down another eight pounds. I'm down to 151, so I'm down seven pounds. So I'm down to 151 right now. It just breaks my heart to know that at the beginning of the summer I was 165 and now I'm 151. Isn't it ironic that the beginning of this was, I just wanna lose weight. And now I'm like, I just wanna gain weight. <laughs> How many of you watched my vision board video? How many of you watched my, how much I made on my first video video? I preached the secret and talking about the energy and what you invite into your life. And if there's anything I keep trying to strive for is stop obsessing about the fact that I can't gain weight. Just like I should have stopped obsessing about the fact that I couldn't lose it. It cannot be all that's on my mind because I'm telling you, I believe it. I believe it that when I keep saying, I can't gain weight, every time I get on the scale, it's gonna go down because that's all that the universe is hearing. The universe doesn't transcribe that into, oh, you can't gain weight, you wanna lose weight, we'll help you lose weight. It doesn't work that way. Do you know what I mean? If you don't know what I mean, read The Secret or watch that. Watch that. I'm not gonna go over it again today, but ultimately I need to start putting out the thoughts that I want and believing in the things that I deserve to have, whether it's your God or it's the universe or believe it, whatever you'd like to believe. I always say I grew up in a very Christian Catholic household, went to church, communion, everything, all of that. It may not be exactly what I instill in my family today, but I still respect it and believe it. And I do believe there is a powerful force out there. I don't know. One thing that I wanna go back a little bit that I forgot to touch on is I did suffer with unbearable postpartum. Uh, that was a big part of my weight gain after childbirth. Um, horrific, I'm talking the next day that evening, my mom went home to Nova Scotia Alan, my spouse at the time, was laying on a cot next to the hospital bed. I wanted to throw the phone on him. I was, I, I hated him. I can't explain it. I hated him. I was like, I hate you, bleep, hate you. Go back to, I was not in a happy place. And then I sat on the side of the bed. I looked at my beautiful daughter, Belle. I looked at him snoring. The poor man had been home for two days from Afghanistan before I gave birth, by the way. So he literally left when I got pregnant and he was home two days just before I gave birth. I guess I should have said that earlier. <laughs> well, if you're watching, you get all the good stuff. But basically, I just sat there and bawled my eyes out. And I swear, guys, I have been crying ever since. <laughs> okay, no, not really. But maybe a little bit, you know? If you suffered with postpartum, I empathize with you more than you can ever imagine it is probably oh man so basically took combined postpartum ptsd now i had severe anxiety uh i was i was a lot to deal with in my marriage if we're honest at that point so i take a lot of blame for that to where neither of us were perfect and I say now, you know, the man that I'm with now, Jamie, he also has severe PTSD, but I feel like we've both done a lot of work at this point to get to where we are, where we can. And I'm sad that my husband, my ex-husband and I didn't have the opportunity to put in that work, to make that work. He is happily married now. 
Uh, he has his own stepkids of his own. My daughter loves to go there when she gets the chance. We are amicable. <laughs> So that's it guys. That pretty much sums up my experience with my weight and my life, with my decision to go forward with weight loss surgery, my experience with it, like I said. I don't think that um, the weight loss surgery gave me Crohn's or anything like that. I really believed in my weight loss surgery. It, a lot of my issues with my stomach started after my gallbladder and the stones in my gallbladder and then getting diagnosed with Crohn's. And my doctor did say specifically that Crohn's is very often brought on by stress and let's just say my guts are activated when I'm not having a good day <laughs> and it's no doubt in my mind that my PTSD and everything else brought on my Crohn's uh, and my stomach issues I don't doubt that for five seconds so but here we are and you know what at the end of the day there's nothing I can do about it so I just try to make sure that it's not an obsession that I don't dwell on it that you know what I'm gonna do what I can do today for a better tomorrow whatever that consists of whether it's making sure that I fuel my body properly that I start working out and start exercising granted if you saw my grocery haul you'd be like girl listen I'm not eating that that's everybody else <laughs> You guys know I live on Mr. Noodle, let's be honest. <laughs> but that's it guys, I feel like I probably left something out in this video. I just really wanted to sit and have like a really good chat with you guys. I had to kick my two older stepkids into the basement, they're virtual learning, but they're doing it in their room, don't worry. I just wanted to have a private moment to talk with you, all hundreds of you. <laughs> <laughs> and just, you know, be full disclosure about what it's like to get weight loss surgery. It is not the answer. It is not the answer. It wasn't my answer. I still, if today, if it was reversed, if my stomach was back to normal, I am telling you yesterday, I would have eaten the entire pantry. So it ain't fixed. However, however, I say that, but I feel like maybe I wouldn't. You know, I like to give myself a little bit of credit. I feel like I've come a long way. I feel like the therapy and the cannabis and everything really helps keep me level and helps me be able to perceive a situation as best I can without blowing it out of proportion and wanting to run away, which is kind of my MO, if I'm honest. <laughs> All right, guys. I am so grateful for you. I am so grateful for those of you who stayed to this very end to see my outro and say goodbye. And that's it. This is literally Vlogmas day 10. And let's pray that I make it through the next 15 days. <laughs> all right, guys, I love you guys all so, so much. And please leave me your comments and questions and everything below or follow me on Instagram because I always check my DMs over there and I would love to help you guys out. All right, take care and I'll see you all in my next video. Oh, 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 oh,